Okay, guys, looks like this is legit. Kawhi Leonard going to the Lakers. Stephen A. Smith was saying that um, Andre Iguodala is going to get a buyout from Memphis, and he is also going to join the Lakers. What that means is that when Kawhi Leonard sits out one-third of the season or whatever he does, they're going to have Andre Iguodala right there. So we will see who else joins. Let's just be happy that, you know, guys like Wes Matthews are already signed. Ennis Cantor is already signed. Luckily, it's happened so late in the process that most other talented players are signed. Now, I may very well have been very naive to say I wasn't worried about the Lakers because of the lack of depth. I may even be naive to assume that this is what's really going on. But this is the guy who said that Al Horford was going to the 76ers within about 15 minutes of uh, Steve Bolpet announcing that Al Horford is not coming back to Boston. They, he was looking for a four-year deal for big money, and it wasn't going to cut out what the Celtics were offering. This was like a week ago, you know? And so let's see what the Lakers fans are saying. Yeah, they trust him. They believe him. He's right all the time. He also reported the Clippers were called by Kawhi and told, thank you very much, but we're not going to sign with you, which meant it was down to two teams, the Lakers and the Raptors. We know that Kawhi would not have been going through all of this if he really intended to sign with the Raptors in the first place. So this all makes perfect sense. We got a legit insider telling us that they're just working out the details. And there's a lot of details because Kawhi, Leonard is a pretty high maintenance guy these days. He'll get whatever he wants and then some. And it looks like they may very well put together a roster where at the very least they're winning 50% of their games that Kawhi Leonard sits. And if he's only sitting about one third of those games and they're winning a hefty amount of the uh, two thirds of the games that he's playing, we're looking at a 55 we're looking at a 55 win team right here guys we will see how the chemistry works uh but we have three big name players and we will see what kind of energy lebron has on the defensive end again i'm not really too worried about it this doesn't strike me as nearly as dangerous as when kevin durant went to the warriors and we all knew it was all over before it started okay the Warriors are still a much better run organization. They just got D'Lo. Uh, Clay Thompson is coming back by the end of the year. And uh, their talent development is much better. And their chemistry is proven and tried and true. Draymond Green. And so, yeah, this is a big move. It's fireworks. But we will see how much substance and how much of it is just flash. And LeBron James, he hasn't lifted a finger since he beat the Celtics in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals two seasons ago so just as Kyrie Irving has been riding his 2016 big shot in the finals LeBron James what have you done for me lately his resume is getting a little stale his body's getting a little stiff I also think he drinks more wine than he should I think it's a habit I think he can't even help himself from drinking wine on the bench that's a big red flag and uh you know can affect moods Mood swings, emotional stability certainly affect his waistline. And we saw how he was struggling with his weight significantly last season. Maybe he goes through one more cycle of the special sauce. The uh, human growth, happiness, or whatever it is he's going to do. He'll be, uh, he'll be juiced to the gills for this last run here. And uh, we will see what kind of special sauce LeBron James introduces to Anthony Davis. But all three of these guys have major injury concerns. So much so that this announcement hasn't even been made yet because Kawhi Leonard is already negotiating to take one third of the season off. And LeBron James, you know, he never got injured. And then a major uh, groin strain last year. We will see. He's the same age where all of a sudden he's pulling up. Oh, he's got a calf. Just like Kevin Durant, right? So anyway, guys, we will see how this all goes. But 
the real thing to worry about is the depth. Are they going to get a lot of high quality players and who else is left right now? And, you know, I don't want to doubt them too much because uh, a lot of people are going to want to, you know, we still have everybody who was on the Lakers last year without a team, guys like Rondo, guys like, uh, what's his face, JaVale McGee, Tyson Chandler. I don't think he has a team. Anyway, uh, we will see how this shapes up, but if they can put together a real roster of 15 NBA players or even 12, uh, they're certainly going to push Kyrie Irving and the Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> Just kidding. They're going to push uh, the Raptors. The Raptors are still going to be just about as good, guys, I'm telling you. Uh, Kawhi Leonard imparted all the wisdom and example setting that he was going to do. And so they ultimately don't need him nearly as much as they did last year. So the trade for the Raptors will still pay off in the form of the lessons learned and the composure taught by Kawhi Leonard to those champion Toronto Raptors. So this would be a great matchup. Lakers versus Raptors, even in the regular season, everybody's going to be watching that. Two super teams, one without their star player, no hard feelings, but let's see what you got, Kawhi. Let's see what you're missing out on in Toronto, right? And you also got the Bucks, very good super team. You also got the 76ers, Al Horford and Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons and Josh Richardson and uh, Matisse Thibault. They got a lot of stuff over there. All right, guys, let me know what you think about all this. We'll see if it actually follows through, but if so, that's my initial reaction. See you soon. Peace.